So we're back again with the orchestration challenge number one, Ravel. And uh, as always, I'm just going to say a few words at the beginning about uh, how I'm going to be uh, looking over these scores, you know, general scoring comments about how it's shaping together, um, you know, word or two about layout, if there are some ways you could improve it to make it more readable for the conductor or for the players, overall quality of the texture. Um, and just uh, reminders to the Facebook participants, you know, watch all the videos, watch this whole video, listen, you know, and listen to the feedback I give to the other participants because it might apply to your score. Um, and that actually relates to the second point. Be aware there's quite a few things I've noticed that I don't have time to comment on, but others might make comments on that. Or I might actually comment on something that you're that you need work on in somebody else's video, right? That's why I'm saying, listen to the feedback given to other participants. And um, <clears throat> I noticed that people are reposting their scores before I even have a chance to um, give feedback here in this video format. So it's a little confusing for me um, because I don't know which score to take. So that's why I'm saying, give your score a couple weeks or more before reposting. I mean, I've tried to get the most recent version, but if I don't, you know, it's just because I, you know, it didn't show up in the search, right? So, um, and then also comment on each other's scores with feedback and support. So if you, you know, if you don't know what to say about somebody's score, but you liked it, then tell the other composer that you liked it. That really, really makes a difference, okay? And it also, you know, as you start to see what's right and wrong about, or not, there's kind of no right and wrong, but what works and what doesn't work quite as well, um in this whole process of orchestration, you might be able to give somebody else some, some you know, comments, just say like, you know, you know, I'm not an expert, but it looks to me like this or that could need, could use a little work, or or maybe have you thought of doing X, Y, Z different. So, you know, it doesn't have to be, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be super critical. It could just be supportive. So uh, that's all I wanted to say about this. This is probably going to be one of the longer videos because I've got 10 participants in all, but I'll try to keep the comments short and to the point. And this is terrific. Um, there have been lots of great entries so far, and this is no exception. So let's start with Russell's score. And uh, by the way, I'm just recording these in any old order that I happen to come across the score um, in my cache of these scores that I was able to download today. Um, so yeah, so there's, there's no hierarchy here. Um, Russell's just happens to be the first one that is, you know, it's the top of the list. So anyway, um, so looking at this, uh, I would say that the horn and the viola, while you can balance them dynamically, you can't really balance them timbrely. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the timbre of the horn is going to not really be a good blend, you know, like in terms of them both sort of kind of holding down this and and this is kind of strange you're basically expressing the same thing as this you know what i mean there there aren't any um i don't see any nuances here in terms of like these this being like a um say like a portato like with a tenuto mark on each note so it seems like kind of a waste yeah see this is really what you want this kind of thing so i don't know where that comes from um yeah so so yeah so you know, it would be better if you want to balance here, just have the violas divisi um, and the horns like have two horns with the second horn in back of the violas and then you'll get a more blended tone. I mean, that will be, I think, more what you're aiming for. Um, but yeah, but just having one below the other and and especially the brighter one on top, um, it is not going to be a balanced sound. Now, it might be balanced dynamically, but not really a balanced tone. This is nice, the little touch of timpani. That's good in there. Feels rather sparse, but you know could lead to bigger things. Um, this is going to be nice and summery right in here. This uh, oboe, it's in a beautiful spot for a solo. And the bassoons descending, it just all makes a really charming sound. Not so sure that you needed to double that with violas because like you lose the distinction of that particular timbre. Right here will be a kind of a smoother tone. Because oboes can make a, a nice combination with violas. Um, they will tend to separate slightly. The oboe will be 
easy to pick out rather than blending perfectly. The oboe blends better with like second or first violins. So anyhow, um, and then clarinet picking it up again. Um, yeah, so that's really good. Um, no big problem there. Kind of tends to sort of tail off a little bit here in the accompaniment. Um, and this is nice. I like this. I like this little touch here of this, um, you know, two octave higher artificial harmonic right there. And that's really easy to play. Um, and yeah, so here you've got these, the same exact pattern as here, sorry, in the violas, uh, but it's not tied. I don't know. I'm, I'm just wondering what's going on there. It just seems very mysterious to me. Anyhow, um, yeah, so, so this, so once again, we're trying to kind of harmonize uh, a string with a wind uh, at a third apart. And, you know, that works in like real chamber orchestra scoring, but this is kind of a bigger orchestra. So I'm not so sure how efficacious that is. Once again, it would just be, you know, to get the sound that you want, it would be easier to just do thirds divisi and thirds in the clarinet. And then you would get that you know, sort of that more blended tone. Um, and you could still throw in this high A here uh, just by leaving out the F. Okay, um, moving onwards. Um, nice little nice little break here for the oboe. Once again, a really nice little register for that. Now here, coming to the end of the phrase, I'm just wondering if you're ending with a flute solo and then you're jumping up to another flute solo, it doesn't really have the same sense that something new is starting. Do you know what I mean? Um, just like, you know, the easiest trick in the book is just to start the new passage with a new timbre, with a new instrument taking the lead and so on. So I didn't really feel that here. Um, yeah, it's not going to be as distinct. This is a nice idea, though, the um, tremolo with the violins. And uh, yeah, harp, um, this does not seem to me as if it was scored um, as a last detail to your first draft, okay? People, please do that. Just don't throw in the harp until you have figured out how you could live without it, and then put it in. Okay, and yeah, this is okay, octaves. Um, it's gonna be a little stronger than you think as an answer to this phrase here. Um, yeah, oboe taking over, same idea. And then I can see where you're heading with this. You want a strong push up to this mezzo forte. Mezzo forte to mezzo piano, it's all right. That's a good balance because you're headed here. You're on your way somewhere. So, you know, mezzo forte and mezzo piano are good, you know, on the way to somewhere else uh, dynamics as opposed to just sort of sitting on them for the entire arrangement. So this is fine in case people have been wondering about my mezzo piano hate, which I don't really hate it, but yeah. Um, yeah, this is cool. Now here, um, I have some issues, and that is suddenly you throw in this brass here, and this really screamingly high B flat and C, uh, just you know starting right on the money. Um, that's going to be a slight problem unless you have a really excellent trumpet player, and you know this big fat tuba note here. If you have two bassoons, um, then you just throw just give this note to the uh, second bassoon, right? Um, and oboe can hit that B flat like it was nothing, and it'll give you that, it'll maintain this sort of beautiful chamber balance that you've got in here, right? So you don't really, you know, this single horn is fine. Um, you could just completely cut the heavy brass, I, is my feeling. Um, and, you know, destination for destination dynamics are missing in a couple of parts. But, you know, generally speaking, this will work. Um, clarinets, flute supporting the um the melody along with say horn and maybe trade the oboe for trade the trumpet for an oboe player um that will work pretty well um and i like the fact that you got the viola on the bottom you know doubling the bassoon uh first bassoon looks like so that will that will be all right it will be all right but i you know you're kind of this feels a little too dramatic for the strings and the the winds sort of drop out. So I'm just kind of wondering, you know, and, and there aren't any dynamics here kind of letting us know where you are headed. And I don't see what the dynamic is here. So that's not, you know, it's not telling me what's going on. Um, clarinet, that's cool with the little bassoon thing coming in there. Um, yeah, that's all right. 
Yeah, that's pretty pretty cool. And yeah, and then this ending with the clarinet and the bassoon. And I like the fact that you did not uh, just really go for it with you know try to trying to replicate the exact same um, pitch positions for this uh, jump up to the top. Like you know instead of instead of really going for the you know going up to the seventh octave of the piano for the top note, um, you were just content to leave it within a reasonable range for the strings. And I think that works great. Okay, so nice score. Thanks so much for sharing it with me, Russell. And on to the next one. Our next score is Jan Beam's score, and this is just a really fun arrangement. Um, I, I would sort of consider it to be more like crossover scoring than like a sort of a serious attempt to replicate uh, an, any any approach by Ravel or, you know, to sort of fit in with his canon of orchestrated works. So, yeah, I, I mean, I am just going to score this, or excuse me, I'm just going to evaluate this on its merits as a score unto itself, okay? And and not really comment of whether or not this or that is, um, you know, is is true to form for Ravel, okay? And I, I know that there were a few comments on Facebook uh, that kind of went back and forth, but it is perfectly legitimate to take a, you know, to take any kind of style so long as you're really trying to make it work. Okay, um, this is going to feel sort of um, uh, kind of wind bandish right in here, the, just to, to play a triad on clarinets, um, and with kind of no, you know, no string support or doubling or anything like that. So, so it's going to have a, you know, in in actual concert terms, it's going to have a kind of a, a, kind of a sort of a dry, woody kind of a feel to the harmony here. Oboe works fine. This little thing by the cello down here is cool, and I, <laughs> I'd like. I like the, you know, the gong, the triangle, the little flute riff. That's all fun. The little celesta gesture. That's cool. Um, yeah. This is going to stand out more than you think it is, even forte piano. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and you know, here you've got horn. Um, yeah. It's... It's... Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to have. I, I see that you know you're doubling the the long pitch, but it's the 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 follow through of the note against the melody um, is going to sort of pull away from its um, its effectiveness, in my opinion. And it is perfectly fine for you, by the way, to be slurring uh, some of the smaller notes in in you know smaller distances between notes. Uh, to make more expressive gestures, I mean, you're you're slurring your your strings right here, um, not the strings below. They should always match, right? The slurs should always match here um, between both sections, right? And here you slur the oboes here, but then you stopped slurring, so that was a little untidy. Okay, um, so but otherwise, this you know, if you don't mind that really kind of cool woody sound of the clarinet, um, you know, that that will be all right. Um, and it's, yeah, just, this is not, I don't feel that this is the strongest right in here. Um, yeah, of uh, the horn passing in front of the harmony in the clarinets like that. It doesn't, doesn't feel to me like the, the strongest scoring there. Um, and, you know, this is sort of like little icing on the cake. It's fine. Um, and then kind of this leap up to here. That's that is okay. Um, you know, you're letting the resonance of the horn do the work here, while the ear is sort of pulled up high. You know, that is okay. This is not going to come off as as well as you think it is. The the trill in the middle there, it might get sort of buried in the texture of everything else that's going on there. Um, yeah, and. Yeah, you know, this high A flat here, just slurring up from A flat, D flat, A flat. I mean, it's it's playable for bassoon, but it, it it's not very lovely. It doesn't have that same sense of loveliness as really strong bassoon scoring, just to go up to that high A flat. Um, I mean, it, it'll work though. It's 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 okay, but I mean, clarinet. You're you're basically scoring a clarinet line right here. You know, it just is so much better on clarinet. Um, yeah. 
This is okay. I almost think that you should have had staccato uh, winds above to, you know, to really punctuate this because it is not the strongest tone, you know? Um, so like say if this were played by um, probably staccato clarinet would be the, you know, would be the tone that would blend the best with this, but flute would also work very well. Actually, flute would be the most comfortable in this register. Um, and um, yeah, you know, then clarinet would work fine. Oboe, it's a little high right here in this bar. Um, yeah, and, and kind of the same thing here. You're going for triple P. I don't think you need to do this right in here, triple P. Everybody could just be P and it would balance fine. Um, you're doing these forte piano things, and I don't really think you need to do that. You know, da 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 da. da. I mean, it just it just seems very showy. Okay. Um, yeah, and then yeah, there's a there's a lot to this, and it's just really unfair to the other entrants if I just really kind of get lost in any particular thing. So I'm gonna skip ahead. And yeah, so slurs, everybody should slur, right? Um, and oboe, you've got just a trumpet coming here once again. But here, see, this works a little bit better because you are going up to it, right? Um, the player has got a, you know, they've got a, a little bit of an arpeggiation up to the high B flat and then the C. But their lips are still pretty cold from not playing for the entire piece. Okay, so, and once again, oboe would work way better on this. And, you know, this huge surge is going to be way huger than you think. Um, it's just the, the sound sets available through Sibelius are making this feel nice and balanced, but it's going to stick out. It's going to really stick out. Um, yeah, this is nice. I like this. It would be nice if... You know, if you could have second flute play this and first flute play that, right? Have have another flute in there. It's it's you know perfectly fine. This is nice. I like this a lot. This doubling of the of the winds and the and the strings. That's going to be very very cool. Um, this is good. This would be interesting as a solo if everybody else is very soft around it, um, and then just cut the oboe, or cut the violas and just let the oboe out, all right? And yeah, all pretty smooth. Celesta is all right. Um, yeah, and then this is just, yeah, and slurs and dynamics, nuances would be really interesting to hear in there. And, you know, this is just, uh, I'm not going to comment on that. But yeah, but, you know, some neat ideas and um, just be aware that that a, a single note with just a little uh, circle over it should be considered to be a uh, natural um, harmonic. And you cannot get a natural harmonic on such a low note. Okay, you'd have to be, and, and especially not a flat, right? It, there is a limited range of what's available. If you want more dynamics, more of that resonant open sound, then just drop this from D flat to D, or excuse me, um, bring it up from D flat to D, okay? And just, you'll have more of a range of um, of natural harmonics and open strings that you can um, rely upon. But there are no artificial harmonics available below uh, G at the top of the staff, right? So that's the first thing that you have to understand. If you want these to be harmonic, give them to the cello, and you just have to just redo everything that you think about this. Okay, um, that was way more than I should have spent on this score, but it was fun to see, and it's just very humorous, and, you know, if you get a chance to, everybody, um, just, you know, watch uh, or look through the score as you listen to the mock-up for this, because it's very, very fun, very funny. Um, thanks so much. Now we have Marcus's score, and uh, Marcus and Kyle have been waiting the longest for their evaluations because they uh, dropped theirs into the feed uh, of the group you know, right as I was releasing the next <laughs> uh, the next video. So, um, and it might be the same for somebody who adds their evaluation today while I am doing these. Sorry, it 
It might be the same thing for somebody who adds their entry today while I'm doing these evaluations. So, so sorry about that, but um, I sort of have to wait for enough of these scores to build up to where I can make it into one longer video. Okay, so let's take a look at Marcus's score. Okay, I like the fact that um, that this phrase is nicely, you know, that you worked out how you do want to do your slurs there, and um, you've got some, yeah, some nice stuff going on here, um, sort of more of a of a chord spread across uh, the strings and the clarinets rather than just straight doubling. Um, yeah, this is nice doubling here and uh, and bowed there. Excuse me, pizzicato here. Um, and Arco there. So, you know, fa a fairly straightforward approach uh, with the with the strings standing out. You do not actually have to mark soli, I don't think, on the violins. It's pretty obvious. You know, when they get a melody, they just go for it. They don't, they don't really need any encouragement. Yeah, so here... Yeah, see, soli and tutti. So, that, see, that just... It doesn't really make, you know, it doesn't really make any sense because they are already all playing together, right? So you're saying tutti as a part of the entire group, but they will stand out no matter what you write. So I would say just drop that. Um, yeah, nice use of softer uh, brass in here. And I, I do like that a lot. You know, almost you wonder whether this just could have been another French horn note. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this works pretty well, uh, this blending here of these tones. Um, this is more of a, you know, everybody is still pretty, you know, you're saying mezzo forte here. So this is, I assume, mezzo forte down to mezzo piano and piano. So right here, this is really more of a clarinet a kind of a line than it is a... Um, a flute line, really. It's it's just not going to give you very much there. Okay, this is good. Bassoon, staccato, uh, cello, pizzicato. That's all pretty nice. I like this up here, this little solo. Now see, this is a solo, right? And you should mark it uh, one solo, right, to tell us that it's the first player. Okay, this is good. All this, you're playing it pretty safe, I've got to say. Um, yeah, I mean, these these will all, all work pretty well, and I like the fact that you are, you know, you're not going for blended tones on the, you know, on the winds all the time, but you kind of do it over here. Now, here you've got, this is just a really powerful sound here. You've got um, clarinet plus A2 flutes plus this, you know, this unison, especially on this E flat you know, and there's this bar right here. That is just going to be really, really thick, really a dense sound here. And I'm not sure that the strings, the rest of the strings are really going to support that as much as you imagine, right? Um, yeah, it just is all really, it just is just going to be the thickest, thickest tone right in there, sort of like very Brahmsian rather than, I would say, more like Ravel. Okay, um, and yeah, so so this was a shorter, um, this was a shorter score. And so let me see if I can just help a little bit more, in terms of just give you a little bit more in terms of evaluation. Um, yeah, so here you're going from pizzicato to arco. Um, now articulation of that, you know, uh, you don't have to do this. Um, you know, you don't have to follow in terms of like slurring these things because. You know, on piano, there, everything has kind of got a percussive, um, you know, more of an attack um, that is like a ting, right? So you've got pizzicato here, arco here. You don't have to slur it as other entries have done. This could be like a staccato. Or it could be like a mezzo staccato, like a slurred staccato. Um, yeah, and I, I feel there needs to be a little bit of lift here, you know, almost like... You know, if these if this these were done like maybe portato or some other kind of thing, it's just a thought, just a thought. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a good first approach. I actually, it's really kind of like the point where I really wanted to hear what you would do was where you stopped. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I did enjoy it. I mean, I think it's a very safe score. Like this will work pretty well, but, um, yeah, just watch out for, you know, watch out for just really dense textures is all I can say. You know, see, this is nice and open, but then you throw in this, just this monster unison. Um, yeah, and everybody's really forte right there. Yeah, so it, it just feels like this is just a really big jump, a really big spike in terms of the texture and the dynamics. Um, and it may not really fit the flow of what you're doing. Okay, so that that was my feedback on this. Really nice, Marcus, and um, would be interested to see you like polish us up, or or if you had you know other things that were going on, would be nice to see those shared in the group. Next score up is by Kyle, and once again, as I just mentioned in the last evaluation, Kyle released this right as I was. Um, releasing mine. So um, so this has been waiting for a while to be evaluated. And um, I mean, it's a neat idea. Uh, I think some of the proportions need to be balanced a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why you need to go piano down to pianissimo on these phrases. It would be better just to mark this all as pianissimo. Do you know what I mean? Uh, because it seems to me like you are sort of telling the wind player how you want to sh how you want them to shape their release, and wind players will always have this kind of shape, just sort of like a downward curve right at the end of kind of like a very um, kind of like a rounded release. Um, so that sort of seems like what you're saying here, anyway. So if you just um, assume p dolce or whatever, and throw in some nuances here too, you know what I mean, and have some slurring. Uh, that is a little bit more rational instead of this, just this big long phrase mark over it, then this could work pretty well. Um, yeah, y yeah, and, and here with the um, the overlapping, I would say instead of doing this and you know having three notes to go, uh, this is going to end up being distracting. You want you want something sort of like a gradual um, uh, transition from one to the other, but they will feel doubled here. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to feel like a gradual transition. So the best thing to do is to find the place where the alto flute and the English horn really sound the most alike. Do you know what I mean? And I would say that would that is enough to say maybe around this written C or this written F for the English horn will be, you know, I would say actually this is probably the best note to um, dovetail in on. Do you know what I mean? Or even just right here on this uh, D flat. So anyhow, um, yeah, just that that's not as uh, effective a strategy as you might think. Um, and this is all kind of fun. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, and this is kind of this is kind of neat actually. This little um, you're just throwing this in right here. Uh, in the mix on your mock-up, um, it came it was pretty prominent. I'd say that this is one, something you really want to keep in the background. Um, just as kind of a light touch over everything. Um, don't really know if you need as the, the shape of the Rolandondo in your in your playback also was a little just got really slow right in here. Um, but yeah, but generally speaking, kind of fun. Yeah, this is going to work pretty well. The um, the harmony from the uh, Shalomo register clarinets with the English horn, okay, and just keeping it light everywhere else. Uh, now there were a few heavier moments, but we'll you know we'll cross that bridge when we get to them. So yeah, so here you've got this. This is kind of neat. You've got your harmonizing and then going up to the F with both uh, players. Um, yeah, it's it's going to feel really kind of jaunty in there um, without anything harmonizing underneath the uh, the dotted note. Do you know what I mean? It's gonna it's gonna feel just there's really going to be a lot of lift to this. Um, this is not a good bowing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it, it, it's just, it's not really the best. Um, it's better to do these in smaller, uh, smaller groups. Um, this could work in terms of breathing, though. 
work fine. Okay, and then here, sort of, I mean, see, here is where you could just really drop this. Because this is, you know, in terms of going from Divisi to Unison, and it just is kind of messy and, and yeah. Yeah, here is where it would be better to take the other strategy of kind of like this. Do you know what I mean? Just turning these into half note values. Okay, and this is neat. This little touch here with the elbow, it's kind of fun. Um, this is really going to be dense. This um, triple unison of flutes and oboe going to mezzo forte and then with the with the first violins. It's going to be very kind of thick and slightly smeary. Um, yeah, and here, decrescendo, right? We're headed for pianissimo. We just need everything to really lay off. And we need the players to know that they're going down to like pianissimo, right? To make way for this single pizzicato coming in here because the the weight of the previous music if you just leave it you know just mezzo forte you know diminuendo we don't really know what that means right um if you just leave it sitting there in the air it will swamp this little pizzicato entrance right this is neat um yeah and see right in here this really dragged the energy down um, and also just, you know, I mean, it's possible on most concert basses nowadays, but it technically is out of range for the standard four string bass, this low E flat. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm not sure why it need to be Sforza, like, <clears throat> I'm not so sure why that had to be in it. That's really is sort of distracting from the, um, the entrance of the oboe. Uh, this is all nice. Okay. And then you've got this sort of more complex, kind of bigger texture where everybody's just really going to town. Um, yeah, I, I like the the punctuation from the horns and the winds uh, against the smoother strings. That all works for me. Okay, this low bass A flat is really dragging down your energy energy once again. Um, and this was good. Uh, I like the scoring here. Um, uh, two flutes and oboes, doubling the violins, and then this, you know, this little part going through here. This is all fine. This high F and E natural and so on. That's that's all good for the clarinets. Um, and I'm I'm just sort of, kind of, yeah. Just I just feel that the um, this little kind of counter melody that goes through needs more support on the bottom. You could have done the clarinets in octaves here to support the violas. Do you know what I mean? Um, on the top note of the viola. So yeah, I just just this is not going to be the strongest. It's going to be very bright on top and then kind of weak in the middle. Okay, so this just needs a little bit more work in terms of balancing. Um, I mean, yeah, you got the horns on the lower note of the of the violas but still need something on the top note all right okay and nice little trumpet solo i like that um and you know cello in there i, I feel that that here's where you could say soli you know that you do you know what i mean um that would be that would be a nice place for them to really stand out um yeah, English horn, flute, it's all good. And this ending was very charming. So yeah, you don't have to say slightly rushed. The, they'll just they'll just know, you know what I mean. But da da do 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 boom. I mean the the director. This is really more of of a decision for the conductor to make. So and I liked yeah I like the sol G idea. It's really pretty much gonna be sol G anyway uh, until you get up to say like B flat. Okay, nice score. Really cool. Um, really great ideas in there. And um, yeah, just just obviously you're exploring uh, different textures and different timbres, and this was a good opportunity to work some of those out. So, so you know, good going. Next, we have Brett Newton's score. Brett is uh, an expert band orchestrator and has written the book Bandistration and actually has a really great patreon going and is getting ready for his next volume uh so yeah so it's neat to see him contribute something and you know his his wind and brass scoring are always spot on uh some neat ideas here for the strings as well 
So starting off here, we've got um, we've got this idea, which you can see more clearly expressed here in the bassoons, which is to um, instead of just having the top line uh, harmonized by thirds in the middle, which is the sort of standard approach that we're seeing in a lot of these scores, Brett is is harmonizing the melody uh, at a sixth when it goes to the top note, which is kind of kind of fun. Um, and that is just happening here, an octave above the bassoon. So you've got bassoons and viola and cello uh, playing solo, right? Not, not a, it's not the string, it's not the section, but it's a, it's the solo players above the bassoons. And that is going to have a very, very um, warm, fuzzy tone. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to have just a really heartfelt, chesty kind of a feel to it. Um, and this is all really nice. This, um, um, these octave A flats sounding two octaves higher. That's all fun. Um, yeah, and triple P is really where you want this. Uh, yeah, so so you got a bit of a an arc to your uh, dynamics here. Um, yeah, just, just I'm sort of reading through that and thinking it in my head, um, and I'm I'm wondering how well that works as you're going to a color change to to be bringing down the dynamics do you know what i mean as opposed to uh playing into it do you know what i mean and and as the piece lifts to to be warmer um yeah and and it kind of just yeah so here's here's the top of the phrase you sort of doubled things before uh, which was kind of neat sort of raga ish here you've got the oboe, first oboe solo with um, with the first violins, you know, and then the and the viola is taking over on a uh, on an octave D flat, which is more appropriate there. Um, yeah, I mean this this all works pretty well. It's interesting to have the flutes here. This is going to be a really soft, um, nice, nice and once again nice and fuzzy sounding um sounding harmony in here just so long as the bassoons know their business and just back the heck off here especially with this e flat here that would be the only thing i would be thinking about yeah um this this middle harmony dropping out here not so sure about that you know maybe if the clarinets came in and and dovetailed bringing it to an end there I would feel happier about that. Um, I feel this may stand out a bit uh, in you know in the face of these flutes here. Um, yeah, and then just from here, the you know it seems like the strings are being used more for color rather than for impulse, um, and just here and there melody. Um, so it just really is you know the string scoring is really more for effect um, than than the most integral type of part. And yeah, and you know, um, I don't know if you really need to to go back and forth. I read a comment uh, in on the Facebook page that you were sort of doing this for the breathing. And um, I mean, I know some players who could just hold that for eight bars with no problem. So um, that that long um, A flat, uh, yeah, muted A flat. Just wondering when. You know, so the player, the second player, has this amount of has all, all the time they need to put on their mute. So I think that it should it could be fine with just one player or one player going every four bars, trading off every four bars. And yeah, this is fun. Once again, it's the, the, it's the same thing. Um, and just kind of going back and forth twice rather than lifting up into the melody. Um, yeah. So I just really feel that the lift really should go here. But yeah. Um, yeah, B flat clarinet standing out an octave above the violas. That's a kind of a nice. Uh, that's a nice touch. It's. It's going to. It, it's it's not the most elegant tone, but it is it is a very striking one and will stand out nicely. Um, I think that you need to work on the slurring here. Just um, just, so where the emphasis is, you know. Uh, da da. Da, 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 da,
da, I just, it just, it just feels weird to me. Um, just like the emphases of, you know, the rhythmic emphasis of the melody seems to be interrupted there. And, and kind of, I would say the same thing for the B flat clarinet. If there's a way of just more, more naturally enunciating that, and especially since you have these natural, um, you know, um, syncopated pulses going through there, and the the melody doesn't seem to really be coordinating with them at all. This is kind of fun. These um, these parts in here, uh, the stopped stuff. Yeah, it's gonna be and yeah, a little hissy. This this feels like a really smooth part to me, but but it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Yeah, it's just the same thing. If if you're having problem. Uh, transposing this is the same it's essentially the same thing as the oboe down an octave yeah it's a neat idea it's a neat idea it's going to give some color to the oboe above but yeah um and then here we're getting some we're getting into some real um you know more coherent uh string scoring so yeah so nice brett it's just it's always nice to see a score that you're working on and you know brett scores these massive uh you know symphonies and and pieces for for um symphonic band and you know they're just toweringly huge so those need to get you know those need to get performed before this needs to get performed that is for sure but uh that's worth checking out and you know maybe check out his patreon or or check out uh bandistration the website uh or his book so um they're all very very cool and there definitely is some polish here going on in the in the wind scoring though i just once again i kind of have an issue with the slurring of the of the melody okay thanks so much for sharing it brett